Oke, okay, uh, Binsang, Konnichiwa, Samura, Indiana Des. So, in this uh, live stream uh, lecture, we will uh, take a look at the last topic for this course. So, this is about pre-stressed concrete. So, before we could uh, deal with it, please uh, sound check our uh, setup okay uh, clear pusher shout out to you Daniela so let's proceed therefore to our topic so what you can see in our uh, screen you have the uh, factory, a workplace of pre-stressed element. So as you can uh, uh, see on the foreground, you have several reinforcement. Okay, so there are several reinforcement, and on the uh, background, you have the the uh, concrete or the reinforced concrete. Okay, so this is how it is uh, being uh, poured and cured. No? So we have what? Mold. There is a mold. Okay, so you have a mold. In uh, the uh, background, you have four uh, cured. There are four cured. Uh, for example, this is a beam. This is a beam section. Okay. And you can see there are what protruding reinforcement. Okay. So they are um, protruding like this so that we will have the chance to what? To stretch. Okay. To, to put in uh but tension, tension force to the reinforcement, okay? So, or uh, put in what, uh, uh, the uh, st stress, no? The required stress or the desired stress on the reinforcement, okay? So, this is how it is being done in the factory floor area. And anyway, this is our chapter 19 of the book. So pre-stressing can be defined as the imposition of internal stresses into a structure that are of opposite character to those that will be caused by service or working load. So we will now, like uh, what? The concept is uh, similar to camber, so cumbering, no? In cumbering, however, we are imposing what? Deflection. But here, the difference is we are instead, rather than imposing deflection, we are imposing a stress which is opposite to the stress that we are uh, what? Going to use in this, for this uh, element. Okay? So that uh, they would what cancel out, right? So the stress would cancel out because opposite direction. Okay? So a common method just uh, to describe pre-stressing is shown in figure uh, below, where a row of books has been squeezed together by a person's hand. Okay, so take a look at the book. Okay, here. So for example, these are several books, right? So how many books? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Even though these books are not pasted, they are not connected to one another, okay? The mere fact that you are actually squeezing the book like this, you are squeezing it like this, okay? So do we have a book? So, for example, you have a book here. 
Okay? You have a book. So you are squeezing it like this. The mere fact that you are squeezing it like this, even though these uh, books are not connected to one another, it will stay this way. It will not fall. It will not fall one after another. It will not fail. Okay? Particularly when the amount to be squeezed is so much such that it could resist the perpendicular load as you can see. So this squeezing force is actually perpendicular to this superimposed loads. Okay? Superimposed meaning there is the self-weight load of books itself. And the, the uh, joint, okay, these joints, okay, meaning the, the space or the, uh, the division between one book to the other book, okay, these uh, lines, these joints, can be thought of as a crack similar to a crack of a normal beam. So, there are plenty of cracks. Okay? But, because you are squeezing it, it will not uh, it will not uh, fall down. The beam will not fall down. Okay? Because you are squeezing it. Do we follow? Okay? It is uh, logical. Okay? It is logical. You can do it right now. So carry about four books and then squeeze it like this, okay? Uh, and uh, you will notice it will not fill down. So, for example, there are four books, okay? So there are four books. So if uh, you don't squeeze it, it will just what? Fill. But if you squeeze it, okay? If you squeeze these books, so how many books are there? Five. So there are five books. If you squeeze it like this, it will not fall down, okay? So it will not fall, okay? Because you are squeezing it. That is the same uh, concept of free stress uh, element, okay? So the resulting beam can carry a downward load as long as the compressive stress from squeezing at the bottom of the beam is greater than the tensile stress, okay, than the tensile stress there from the moment produced by the weight of the books and the superimposed loads. Okay? So you need greater uh, squeezing. How to do the squeezing? You have to stretch, okay? Okay, take a look again. You have to squeeze, you have to squeeze this reinforcement so that afterwards, you squeeze that uh, reinforcement so that if you release, it will create a force that is similar to squeezing. Okay? So that is the, that is the concept here. Okay? Such a beam has no tensile stress and does no moment resistance until it is squeezed together or pre-stressed. You might very logically now expand your thoughts to, to a beam consisting of a row of concrete blocks squeezed together, then to a plain concrete beam with its negligible tensile strength similarly pre-stressed. So, the... Uh, the books do not have tensile strength because they are not pasted to one another. They are not connected. They are not welded. They are not uh, bolted. So, if you release the squeezing force, the books will fall down and they will what uh, be separated from one another. However, due to that uh, pre-stress force, they are what? trying to resist even the application of superimposed load. Okay? 
So, from the uh, preceding discussion, it is easy to see why priest tracing has captured imagination of so many and why it has all sorts of possibilities now and in the future. Okay? In the... Uh, in the uh, current uh, construction uh, technology, we have so much pre-stress application. So they will be what uh, made in the uh, manufacturing plant. They are made in the uh, uh, plant, then delivered to the site, right? Okay? Uh, and with pre-stressed. They are already the having the reinforced uh, steel bars stressed to the point that it is what is squeezing the concrete uh, components. Okay? So, sequence showing the effect of breeze tracing force at different stages. So, letter A, cables stretched in the concrete placed. Concrete placed meaning the concrete, the wet, the wet concrete is being poured. Okay. So, you have to stretch the uh, cables. So, the reinforcement is the cable. Okay. Then, pour the, uh, the uh, concrete. Then, next stage, cables cut after concrete gains sufficient strength okay so we need uh, we can just cut the cables here cut it here cut it here then after the uh, concrete is uh, cured it uh, dried okay so the uh, cables now what uh, <coughs> try to squeeze the uh, concrete and it will squeeze it like this it will squeeze it like this because this one <coughs> is the situation wherein the load is not yet applied okay the load is not yet applied that's why it is looking like this the same with the uh, the concept of uh, camber it looks like the cumbered uh, beam okay so after you try to what to uh, apply the load that's when this beam will straighten up it will straighten up and will look like this okay so so as you can see uh, the following steps are taken number one still strands uh, were placed in the lower part of the beam, okay, so like this, lower part, meaning the tension part of the beam, okay, then the strands were tensioned to a very high stress, so it is being stretched, okay, like this, it's being tensioned, tension meaning it is being stressed out, okay, so then number three, concrete was placed in the form, so this is the form, form works, okay, there is a form, there is a mold, Okay, so pores and allowed, allowed to gain sufficient strength for the pre-stress strand to be cut. Okay, so if it is dried already, you can cut the, the uh, cable. Okay, then the strands, the strands meaning the cable. Okay, strands were cut. Then uh, afterwards, okay. So... These are the example of C channels. C channels that are pre-stressed concrete. Concrete C channels. Okay. So after uh, putting it on, um, setting it uh, up as the slab, okay, then applying the load, then it will be straight, straight enough, okay. So, now, let's take a look at the advantages. Advantages and disadvantages. 
So advantages, uh, it is possible with press tracing to utilize the entire cross-section of members to resist load. Okay, because we have what? An input. Uh, but compression. No? So we have an input compression. So the, uh, the lower part of the beam which is supposed to experience tension cannot experience tension because of too much uh, compression. Okay? So thus, uh, smaller members can be used to support the same load. Smaller meaning thinner. Thinner meaning we can have what? So much space. We can have so much space. For example, as you can see on the uh, ceiling, there are several what? Beams. So if the beam is thin, okay, this is the current technology in Japan. They have very thin beams because of a uh, pre-stressed concrete. So they are using several beams, pre-stressed beams. Okay. So thinner beams, then uh, therefore uh, they will have shorter uh, story height. So one floor is less than three meters. They can have uh, 2.7, 2.8 uh, meters for a uh, one story height. So they can economize by so much. So not only that, but also uh, same size members can be used for longer span because of that. Also, this is a particularly important advantage because member weights make up substantial part of the total design loads of concrete structure. The weight would become lighter. Okay? So, therefore, pre-stressed members are crack-free under working loads. Compared to conventional one, wherein we expect cracks at the bottom part, up to the neutral axis, okay? So, as a result, uh, they look better and more watertight, providing better corrosion protection for steel, okay? Because air particles cannot get in, okay, to uh, interact with the uh, iron, okay? Uh, producing uh, ferrous oxide, okay? Furthermore, Crack-free pre-stressed members require less maintenance and last longer. Okay? Therefore, for a large number of structures, pre-stressed concrete provides the lowest first cost solution. And when its uh, reduced maintenance is considered, pre-stressed concrete provides the lowest overall cost for many additional cases. Okay? The negative moments caused by the pre-stressing produce camber, just like what I am explaining with the result that the total deflection are reduced other advantages of pre-stressed concrete include the following reduction in uh, diagonal tension stresses sections with greater stiffness and under working load and increased fatigue and impact resist increased fatigue because uh, it will not cycle to what compression tension compression tension there is no such thing we can limit it the element to experience only compression, okay? So, fatigue and impact resistance compared to ordinary reinforced concrete, okay? What about the disadvantages? Okay? So, pre-stressed concrete require use of higher strength concrete and steel and use of more complicated form works. We need those things. So, the type the grade of this steel is uh, higher, therefore it is more expensive. So, other advantages include, number one, closer quality, control, okay, and number two, losses in the initial pre-stressing forces. When the compressive forces from pre-stressing are applied to the concrete, it will shorten somewhat, partially relaxing the cable. Okay, there is a partial relaxing the cable. The result is some reduction in cable tension with a resulting loss in pre-stressing forces. 
So, you need really a very good uh, quality of concrete and steel compared to what is conventional. Because the bonding of steel to concrete must is be established. Okay? Additional stress uh, condition must be checked and designed such as the stress occurring when the pre-stress forces are first applied and then after pre-stress losses have taken place. Okay? As well as the losses, stresses occurring for different loading condition. So we need to check what would be the stress condition before it is being applied. So uh, the foresight of the design engineer must be there. Okay? Uh, meaning to say the uh, design process would be but, uh, a little bit uh, in demand with respect to accuracy and precision. Okay? Uh, and since uh, Japan is one of the leading countries with respect to the quality of steel. So that's why they, they can do it. Okay? Cost of end anchorage devices and end beam plates may be required. So to maintain the proper amount of uh, compression. Okay? So next is uh, pre-tensioning and post-tensioning. So there are two general methods of pre-stressing. So one is called pre-tensioning and the other one is called post-tensioning. So pre-tensioning is where the pre-stress tendons were tensioned before. Okay, before, that's why it's called pre-tension. Pre-tension before the uh, concrete was placed. So the tension is being uh, applied to the cables before the concrete was placed. After the concrete had uh, hardened sufficiently, the tendons were cut and pre-stressed force was transmitted to the concrete by the bonding of uh, the two materials. So this method is uh, particularly well suited for mass production because uh, the casting beds can be constructed several hundred feet long. Okay, the tendons can be run for the entire bed length and used for casting several beams in a line at the same time. Okay? So just like what this is. Okay? Pre-stress bed. Okay? We just connect the beds and uh, we have abutment. So, so when we have abutment, this is what we call one. This is commonly the uh, the arrangement of bridge elements okay however in the post tension okay, post tension pre stress concrete pre tension uh, pre stress concrete so there are the two types no in the post tension the tendons are stressed up there the concrete is placed okay so so post tensioning and the pre tensioning is uh, with respect to the application of concrete okay. so it is actually possible in post tensioning to have either bonded or unbonded tendons if bonded the conduits are uh, often made of aluminum steel or other metal sheeting in addition it is possible to use steel tubing or rods or rubber cores that are cast in the concrete and remove a few hours after the concrete is placed. Okay, so that is how uh, we uh, may uh, produce the post-tensioning. Okay? The grout is also, after the steel is tensioned, cement grout is injected into the duct for bonding. The grout is also useful in protecting the steel from corrosion. If the tendons are to be unbonded, they should be greased to facilitate tensioning and to protect them from corrosion. So, entirely different. Entirely different method. 
the pre-tensioning and post-tensioning. Anyway, materials used. Okay. So, materials ordinary used for pre-stressed concrete are concrete and high-strength steel. High-strength steel. So, the grade is higher. Okay. So, we are using, for example, 100. Okay. While uh, in ordinary, we are using uh, grade 36 and grade uh, 50. Okay. So, those are the material expectation, okay? Okay. Should the pre-stress of 20 PSI be put into such rods, okay? The resulting strain would be equal to uh, 0 0.00069, okay? This value is less than the long-term creep, okay? And sinkage strain normally occurring on concrete which is roughly 0.0008 okay so it is even less than that which would completely relieve the stress in the steel should the high strength steel be stressed to about 150 ksi and at the same creep leaving 150 ksi minus 23.2 ksi 126.8 ksi in the steel, okay, a loss of only 15% of the steel stress, okay. So, these are, with regards to the practice, okay, three points of pre-stress uh, steel are used, single wires, can do it, wire strands, so meaning there are uh, two or more, and bars, or there are several, Okay. The greater the diameter of wires, the smaller become their strength, of course. Okay. And bond to the concrete. As a result, wires are manufactured with diameters from 0.192 inches up to a maximum of 0.276. So that is about 9 over 32 inches. Okay. 9 over 32. That is the usual value okay and uh, in post tensioning okay large number of wires are grouped in parallel into tendons the strands that are uh, made by twisting wires together are used for most pre-tensioned work so like this now so the wires are being twisted okay so it looks like a rope okay the uh, wires looks like rope so the uh, strands are manufactured with diameters from one fourth inch to one half inch one fourth to one half inch so that is 6.5 uh, to 13 mm okay sometimes large high strength heat treated alloy steel bars are used for post tension section so the size three port inch to one and three eight inches. So bigger, bigger, uh, large, high strength, heat treated. Okay. So this another uh, manufactured uh, section. Okay, precast, precast, pre-stressed. Highway bridge girders at production facility ready for delivery. No? So look at the uh, cables right here. This is supposed to be the, these are the cables that are supposed to be uh, given the desired stress. Okay, so to counteract the the uh, tension side, okay, so that uh, the concrete uh, material will not experience cracks, okay. Usually for bridge, that's why it's very what uh, the uh, 
constructing bridges very fast because they are already made up in the uh, manufacturing plant then just deliver okay? and then connect at the site for uh, the yield okay? so what we have here so, the yield stress for wires and strand is usually assumed to be a stress that causes a total elongation of 1% to occur in the steel for high strength bars the uh, yield stress is assumed to occur when a 0.2% permanent strength fault. Okay, 0.2%. This is 1% elongation, 0.2%. Okay. What about the stress calculation? So this is uh, the stress calculation wherein there is what? A uh, summation of uh, this and this and this. So there are three components, right? Uh, there are three factors. Uh, P is what we uh, know to be pre-stressing force. Okay? So it is uh, negative because it is compression. No? P is the pre-stress force. E is the eccentricity. So so this uh, P times eccentricity, this is a uh, moment. This is the uh, first first uh, order moment using the uh, compressive force here. No? So with respect to the centroid of the cross section, C is the distance from the centroid axis to the extreme fiber, top of bottom, depending on where the stresses are being determined. M is the applied moment from unfactored loads okay, at the stage at which the stresses are being calculated. A is the uncracked concrete cross-sectional area. Okay, uncracked, usually the uh, gross cross-sectional area is uncracked. And I is the moment of inertia of the gross cross-section. Okay? So, remember, when we are talking about combination, we only have what? This one and this one. But now, we have this eccentricity. Okay, so, three factors. Okay? Okay, next uh, we have For example, we have this uh, concrete stress distribution from uh, eccentricity stress Okay, neutral axis So this is what we mean by eccentricity so it is a distance from the neutral axis to the tendon or to the cable. Okay? So P is horizontal. Okay? So this is how our three terms works. One, two, three. So P over A, okay, which is negative, it is going to the right, uh, to the left rather. So negative plus the moment which is going to the right is positive, going to the left negative, so okay. So we have to add these two, and then we have the uh, moment from the load, which is uh, negative on top, positive on the bottom. So we have to uh, add the top and the bottom, so we have what? Trapezoid, okay? So plus, minus, minus. Oh, there are two negative, so the negative may be big, bigger than the positive, so negative is going to the left. Okay? Then uh, negative, negative may be bigger than the positive, so everything is negative. Okay? If you add all these three. Okay? Any question? Are there any question? So let's... Uh, Continue. Uh, so, let's go to example one that illustrates the calculation needed to determine stresses at various points in a simple span pre-stressed rectangular beam. It will be noted that as there are no 
moments at the ends of the simple beam. No moments at the ends of simple beam because simple support. From the external loads or to the beams on weight, uh, the uh, MC over I part of the stress equation is zero there and the equation reduces to two terms. Only two terms, right? So let us uh, go to the example. Okay. So we have calculate the stresses in the top and bottom fibers at the center line and ends of the beam shown. Where is the beam? So this is the beam. Okay. So the beam cross section is here. So okay. We have what? 12 inches by 24 inches. So that is the gross area. 12 by 24. So the span is 20 feet. So we have the Pre stress force 250k. Okay, we have uh, E. So this is our E to the neutral axis, right? So which is 9. So meaning we have uh, concrete cover, which is 3. So 3 plus 9 is uh, 12, okay? So the load is 3 kips per foot including the weight of the beam so let's uh, solve okay now to solve this first uh, section properties okay section properties i is uh, b at cube over 12 so b at cube over 12 so you can find out that this is equal to 13,824 Area, gross area, 12 times 24. Okay? Multiply. No? And then, uh, moment. Uh, this is the moment because you have what? Three kips. So, simple uh, beam. So, three, uh, meaning WL squared over 8. WL squared over 8, this is the moment at the center. This is the moment at the center. So, 3, 20 squared over 8. This is what? Uh, 150. Okay? So, therefore, after uh, having the property of the section, we can take a look at the stresses. Okay? Stress at beam center line. So top and bottom. Okay. So therefore we have these three terms. Okay. P over A. P we already know. That is uh, actually given. Area to eight eight we already calculated. So that will bring us negative because that is uh, going to the left. Okay. Going to the left. That is what uh, compression. So we have what P times uh, eccentricity, which is nine times hmm, times C, okay, which is uh, twelve, and then divide by I. So therefore, that is positive, okay, and then. This is from the top, okay? From the top. And then, uh, minus uh, M, which is 150, times C, which is 12, divided by I, but we have conversion factor 12, so we can have the three terms and the sum, algebraically, is equal to negative 0.4, 7, 7. So, negative. Okay. Going to the uh, left. Okay. Uh, from the bottom, so this one is negative, negative, and positive. From the bottom. 
Okay, so on the bottom, uh, the same magnitude, but this is negative, negative, and positive. So it is a little bit bigger than uh, the stress at the top because this is positive and this is negative. Okay, so we have what? Negative 1.259. So compare this. So, we have a trapezoid. Okay? So, stresses at beam ends. Okay? Stress at beam ends. Top. Okay? Top. <laughs> so, from the top, we have negative, positive. We do not have moment from the end because it is simple support. So, therefore, this one. So, the same here, the same magnitude, but we do not have this negative. So, therefore, uh, uh, we will have just positive okay, values from the top. Then, from the bottom, the same the here, but we do not have the moment condition. So, a little bit uh, bigger. So, we have that answer. Okay, so we can what? Uh, draw. So an example uh, that we already shown, uh, the, the stress at the top of the beam, the tens will be quite high. If however, the tendons are uh, draped as shown in 19.7, so draped. Okay, like this. Okay. It is possible to reduce or even eliminate the tensile stresses. Out in the span, the centroid of the strands may be below the lower kern point. Lower kern. What do you mean by kern? So please review your either uh, mechanics of uh, rigid bodies, mechanics of uh, uh, mechanics of deformable bodies, or theory of structure. We have the kern, definition of kern. Tensile stresses in the top will uh, be the result if the tensions are draped so that uh, at the ends they are located at or above. This point tension will not occur in the top of the beam. So we have here tension at the top because it is positive. That is Tension. So, compression, negative. Tension, positive. Okay? So, we have the same character here. FT, okay, so we have what? ACI section states that class U and T members flexural stresses may be computed using uncrack section properties. For class C section, however, it is necessary to use crack section properties. For class C, okay, but for class U and T, no need, no? So we have this one. No? Modulus of rupture. So, okay. So if, uh, if only compressive stresses should be allowed uh, in the section that are to be used in severe corrosion condition. If tension cracks occur, the uh, result may uh, very well be increased cable corrosion. Okay. So that's why uh, compressive stress is only allowed. It's the only type allowed. Okay. Now we have uh, example number two. We are uh, asked to determine the location of the lower current point 
at the ends of the beam of example 1. Calculate the stresses at the top and bottom of the beam ends, assuming the tendons are placed at the current point. Okay. So, let us uh, go to the solution. So, locating the current point. So, top. Okay. Negative P over A plus P C over I equal to 0. Okay. So, therefore, calculate. So, negative 250, 288 denominator. So, 250 E tested over. So, therefore, if you uh, equate this two, equate them from one another, so we can solve for E. So, the E is actually 4. So, we should locate the uh, uh, the uh, cables, the tendons at E is equal to 4, meaning from the center to the pole. Okay? This is the location. Computing stresses, tap. Okay? So, using the 4 value, the value, meaning if the cable is located at 4 inches from the neutral axis. So, on a example number 1, it is located what? 9 inches from the neutral axis. So, so now, it is only 4. So, it is near the uh, what? The neutral axis. It is nearer. So, therefore, we have what? If you compute this to top, the answer is zero at the top so we do not have tension at the top we do not have tension zero okay so if we compute the bottom we have negative so compression so everything is in compression we do not have tension so from the top zero and bottom compression so everything will be compression because it this is just like what triangle the diagram is only triangle in this uh, regard okay so next uh, any question from our examples there are none so let us continue shapes of pre-stressed sections so what are the common shapes so letter i letter t so there are several no uh, shapes okay so if a member is to be made only one time a cross section requiring a simple formwork does uh, it will be probably be used for instance simple formwork is essential for most cast in place work should however the points be used a large number of times to make many identical members more complicated to cross sections such as i and t channels or boxes will be used why? To economize the amount of material, okay? And to reduce cost, to reduce uh, weight, and to reduce the dimension, okay? So these are the things that uh, we already discussed in the advantages, okay? So like this, so these are the common types of shapes, okay? A single T. So, we have the tendons here, okay? So, the center, the centroid of the steel bars, so that is the center, and then uh, determine the neutral axis, then the neutral axis to the center, that is our E. So, we have double T. So, T and another T, side by side with each other. So, double T. This is what we call double T. Okay. So another uh, reinforcement. I section, plenty of reinforcement at the bottom. Okay. Back section like this. So we have one reinforcement along this uh, boundary. Okay. Another shape. 
Okay. Unsymmetrical eye. So, this is unsymmetrical eye. Meaning, this is uh, bigger than this point. Okay. So, the slab is cast in place. So, after putting on the uh, unsymmetrical eye, so, we will what? Pour in the slab. Okay. Similar with this one. So, this is inverted T. Okay. Inverted T. Look at the uh, tendons. Okay. Look at the arrangement of tendons. Now, it is very hard to find out the what? The centroid of the reinforcement. Also here. A little bit complicated. It's not very hard. But it's a little bit complicated to find the centroid. Okay. So, channel. So, without the extra plants. Okay. So, it is looking like C channel. Okay. So these are the these are the shape of the commonly used pre-stressed sections. Okay, like this. Okay. After delivery, you are now going to use a crane to uh, connect it to the proper. A column, proper uh, structural element. These are concrete, we stress. Oh, different. So, this is box, okay? So, that is not here, no? That shape is not here, but it looks like this one, no? Box. So, that is a box section, okay? So, like this, okay? This is a box section, okay? For what? Segment of the Skyway or so on. It is a box section. It's not common shape, cross section, okay? Okay, pre-stress losses. So the flexural stress is calculated for the beams of example 1 and 2 were based on initial stresses in the pre-stress tendons. However, that is not always available in practice because there are losses. These stresses become smaller with time. After some time, for example, five years, it becomes several uh, affected by several factors. These factors we have discussed in the following, for example, one, elastic shortening in the concrete. Number two, shrinkage and creep. Number three, relaxation or creep in the tendon. Number four, slippage in the post-tensioning anchorage system. Okay? And then number five, friction along the ducts used in the post-tensioning. So those are some of the uh, reasons why it will gain uh, losses. Okay. So for uh, elastic shortening, for example, so we have what? Free stress equal the listening of the steel strain. Okay. okay, so like this, no? So we can compute, therefore, we have the ratio in proportion, concrete side, steel side. So the uh, delta, caps delta here is uh, the uh, ratio of concrete to steel, uh, what? Uh, strain, no? Delta is the ratio. Okay. Concrete to steel. So, also, we have N. Or the uh, modular ratio. Okay. Modular ratio. So, we can approximate that for. This is the result. 
Now, these are the result. Fc is approximately feasible divided by gross area. Okay? So, what is feasible here? Feasible. Feasible. Okay? So, feasible is the initial total cable stress and PF the stress afterwards. Okay? So, feasible is the initial PF stress afterward. So, so feasible is bigger, a little bit bigger. So, how much? So, the difference of these two. So, for example, after 5 years, PF. So, this is the ratio. Okay? PF times APS divided by AC times N. So, for uh, the next one, the shrinkage, we have the Epsilon SX. Okay? Epsilon SX. So, that is a uh, shrinkage strain. Okay? We have 0 0.00055 quantity 1 minus 0 0.06 BS. Okay? Multiply by quantity 1.5 minus 0.15 H. Okay? So, B is what we call the volume. Okay? And then S is surface. So, volume to surface ratio. Okay? So, volume to surface ratio multiplied by 0.06. Okay? So that is... Usually, this one. Okay. So, H is humidity, relative humidity. So, there's an effect. Humidity has an effect because if uh, the uh, element is too dry, therefore, it will really shrink because of what? How much? About 3%, uh, 5% of water will be dry. So, what will happen to the element? will uh, shrink. So, creep. What about the creep? Okay. So, CT. The creep and shrinkage are larger okay, as are the resulting losses. Okay. So, depends. Average losses are about 6% for pretension members and about 5% for Post tension, so six to five percent uh, loses due to shrinkage and creep. Okay, what about for slippage? Point one inch to point two inch. So that is the amount of usual slippage 0.1 to 0.2 inches so that is the slippage of the uh, cable okay? so it slips from the bonding between the two materials okay? so next is uh, friction so length effect so therefore because length has something to do with the uh, area in contact okay area in contact so we have bubble effect we have curvature effect that is related to this okay so therefore take a look at the ultimate strength of pre-stress section okay so we have an equation as described here by uh, equation 8-3, we have for uh, bonded members FPS. Okay? So FPS is the average stress in pre stressing steel. So, so this is the average stress PS is equal to uh, FPU. Okay, and then quantity 
multiply by quantity 1 minus uh, gamma P divided by beta 1. We already know what is beta 1. Gamma P is a factor for the type of pre-stress tendon whose values are specified in uh, section 18. So we can just try. take a look at that section. Gamma P is equal to 0.55 for FPY over FPU not less than 0.8 and it is equal to 0.4 for FPY over FPU not less than 0.8 and 0.28 so there are three okay if the uh, that ratio is not less than 0.9 so you can just select the value and uh, DP is the distance from the extreme compression fiber Okay, compression fiber meaning at the top to the centroid of the pre-stress reinforcement. So this is uh, our D. Really, this is really our D. So that is what? Quantity rho P FP over FC prime plus D over DP quantity W minus W prime. So what do you mean by D? Okay. And W prime so W prime is equal to rho prime Fy over Fc prime. Mm -hmm. That is the uh, still ratio on the what, uh, compression, no? Compression. So W is uh, rho Fy over Fc prime. So this is an important formula. Uh, that is for bonded members. How about for unbonded members? We span to depth, span to depth, ratio 35. So greater than 35, less than 35. So unbonded members. So for uh, unbonded members, the equation is much simpler. Okay? You take a look at the uh, equation here. It's very complicated, no? Okay, so. Okay. so now it is a little bit simpler for uh, a member with span to depth ratio of less than 35 and more than 35. Okay, so we have those three equations and therefore we can take a look at a particular problem. Okay, in this problem, we are asked to determine the permissible ultimate moment capacity okay, or the design capacity phi mn of the pre-stressed banded beam banded okay, beam so there are two types banded and banded okay, beam of figure 19.9 uh, so FPY 240 KSI APU 275 KSI, FC prime, 5,000. So FC prime, better quality concrete and also better quality reinforcement. So 240 and then 275. Take note. Okay. So our FY is usually about how much? 50 and 36 KSI. This is what? 240. It is a uh, FY is 240. To, uh, grade 240. Imagine that. Grade 240. And then uh, the quality of concrete is 5 KSI. Usually we have 3 KSI to 4 KSI. But now 5 KSI. Okay. Very good quality. Okay. So therefore, uh, given this and uh, looking at the picture, this is the given. Okay, so we have 12 inches by 24 inches. DP is 21.5 inches. So APS 1.4 square inch. Concrete cover is 2.5. Okay, so with that, we can compute and solve the problem. Approximate value of FPS. Okay, so this is. Actually, FS, okay. 
So, from ACA code, so we have rho P is equal to APS over BDP. So, we have B and D and then APS. So, because of that, we can calculate the steel ratio. Okay? Okay, so calculating the steel ratio, then also calculate F Y F U, okay, F Y F U, 0.873. So therefore, how much gamma P is equal to 0.4, as given immediately after the presentation of 18.3 equation earlier. So 18.3. So 18.3. This one, because we are given what. Bonded. Okay? So that is bonded members. So we have point four. Now uh, FS estimated distress in first test reinforcement. Note beta one point eight. Why? Because we have greater than four thousand. This is five thousand. You can not you can compute this. You can compute. You can compute. Because this is greater than 4,000. Okay. So that's why we have a lower value for beta 1. And D, the distance from the extreme compression fiber of the beam to the centroid of any non pre stress tension reinforcement is zero since there is no such reinforcement. Everything is what? is cable or uh, uh, pre-stressed reinforcement. So, therefore, we have a shorter version of the formula. Then, what is that formula? So, shorter version of 8 industry formula. So, substitute the values. So, 275 FU so, gamma P is 0.4, beta 1.8, therefore 1 minus that ratio times quantity 0 0.00453, okay, which is the rho, okay, and then quantity 275 divided by 5, okay, plus 0, so 0 here, so 275 is FU. Okay. So, FU, what is 5? FC prime. FU, FC prime. Okay. So, if you compute that, it will result in 233.9 KSI. Okay. Because of that, we can uh, then compute the value of A, afterwards value of C, similar to what we are doing in the But After this, similar. Okay. So, A, so this one. Meaning, uh, T is equal to C. Okay? T is equal to C. So, uh, tension APS times FS. FS, we are using FS. Okay? So, here, FS. FS, because it is less than yield. Ang yield, the yield is 240. 240 is the yield, as you can recall here. Here, 240, yield. Okay, that's why it is FS, less than, less than 240. So, using that, that is the steel yield, then divide by 0.85 FC prime B. So this is the value of B, 12. So, you can find out the value of A. So, A is 6.42. So, therefore, we can find out the value of C. Uh, divide by 0 0.8, 8.03. .8 Therefore, we can find out the variation proportion D minus C over C. Same formula, D minus C over C. The only difference is this is DP. This is for tension. Okay? So, D minus C over C times 0 0.003. So, this is just equal to 0 0.005. So, the member is tension controlled. Therefore, phi is equal to 0.9. Hey, 0 0.005 and greater. Okay, so it is uh, more than 
0.004 which is uh, intermediate okay so no transition uh, region more than the transition region so phi mn is equal to phi as fs times this uh, moment arm moment arm we can uh, also find out okay so 21.5 here that is the 21.5 so therefore if you can solve it okay here here 21.5 minus a over 2 so that is moment arm multiply by fs multiply by as times 0.9 which is uh, phi Therefore, we can have this and divide by 12, we can have 449.2. Our answer okay, for design moment capacity. So that is our design moment for this what, rectangular shape pre-stressed concrete element. Okay? So, almost similar. Uh, the only difference is the use of uh, this one, use of this formula, very complicated one, that is formula 18.3, 18 the street, okay, almost similar, so afterwards similar, after this one, so preparatory, computation, then that formula, 18 the street, for bonded, for unbonded, we have another set of formula, then the same here, any question? Any question regarding that example? Any question? So, deflection. This is the next topic. This is for per performance limit state. Performance is uh, different from safety. Safety is the strength that is uh, example previously, okay? So now we are going to discuss deflection. Meaning this is what? Serviceability. So we have two types of limit tape. The, uh, not only two types, but the most common, most popular and uh, usually used uh, type of design. Okay, so, uh, that is strength limit state and serviceability limit state. Deflection is under serviceability. Okay, so we have here the same equation, but we have different vision here. Okay, okay so conjugate beam. So using the theory of structure from the diagram, you can determine this. Here, oh. centerline deflection can be calculated by taking the moments at the point desired when the conjugate beam is loaded, okay, with M over EI diagram. So, it is talk about in the theory of structure. M over EI diagram, okay, use that as uh, in our conjugate beam so I open uh, <coughs> so the similar uh, section but apparently this is not common because we have a common we talk about the common shape but apparently this is a box type box uh, cross-section okay. so these are the deflection relationship so if you have E on the center line so you have a negative okay so negative meaning uh, that is compression okay 
meaning that is place test okay so therefore you have this type of deflection in uh, the beam so deflection diagram so conjugate beam So, if you have that, parabolic uh, tendons rather than straight, uh, you have the following. Okay? Then you have the following. So, it will just be what? So, because of that, take note, all the formulas are relevant here are from the theory of structure so 5 over 3 4 1 over 24 1 over 24 5 over 48 uh, 1 over uh, 3 so those are from the theory of structure okay so now let us uh, talk about the next problem okay so pre-tension rectangular beam shown in the figure has straight cables okay so it is not but what type of cable is that it is not parabolic okay so straight tendons okay and with initial stress of 175 ksi and final stress after losses 140 ksi determine the deflection at the beam center line immediately after the cables are cut so, meaning initial. So, EC is equal to 4 times 10 to the 6. Assume concrete is uncracked. Okay. That is normal. Assumption. We are uh, using pre-stressed concrete. So, these are the given information. 30 feet span. Simple span. Dead load. Live load. Dead load is only the beam weight only. Okay. And then we have rectangular 12 by 20. We have D16 concrete cover port. We have 1.2 square inch. AS. Okay. So from those information, therefore IG is BH over 12. BH cube over 12. So 8,000. So E, as you can see on the given, from the centroid, to the uh, uh, reinforcement of the tendon, so that is 6. So beam weight, so what is the shape? 12 by uh, 20 times uh, 150. This is constant from the table, okay? So this is what? In SI unit, this is uh, 23.6, okay? 23.6. So therefore, you can have what? 250 pounds per uh, foot. That is the weight. So, deflection, therefore, using this, okay? PEL squared over 8EI. So, we have the value of E. We have the value of I. As calculated. So, constant, efficient, 1 over 8. And then, we have P, okay, uh, P is dead load times 175, okay, so 1.2, <laughs> dead load is 175 times 1.2, <laughs> so 1.2 times this one, okay, that is P, so E is 6, and this one is L. And 12 is the conversion factor. So, therefore, so, so this is square inch times inch. So, inch to the third power. Okay, inch to the third power. Then, we have what? Inch to the port, therefore per inch, no? So inch cube, 
So PSI, PSI, so green inch, so with inch squared, so inch. So the answer is in terms of inch. So because it is square inch divided by inch. So therefore, that is uh, our delta due to cable. Okay? And if you compute this, this is the formula from theory of structure. Okay? For this type of simple, simple support or simple beam, automatic, we have the formula for simple beam. So that is negative 0.638. Negative. So... Ah. So, meaning that is going like that, okay? Take a look. Um, it's still negative, okay? This is not going down but up, okay? Because it is negative. The deflection is still there. So, camber type. It is still camber type. That is delta. But delta, due to beam weight, okay? So, beam weight 5 over 384 WL to the port power EI. So, 250. Then, change the uh, inch to feet conversion also L convert to the port power so therefore if you compute so you have positive 0 0.142 so this is going down positive deflection going down negative deflection going up negative so it will cancel out then uh, if you total so still positive is less than the negative therefore the deflection is upward so meaning it is not yet uh, in full capacity no okay we still uh, come bearing up so it is okay you can add more loads than this okay that is what we mean by this one okay so from this example it can be seen that uh, not counting external load, the beam is initially cumbered upward. So, still with cumbering how much? 0.496 inch. So, almost 0.5 inch. So, about how much? 0.5 inch is 13 mm. So, 13 mm for 30 feet. Okay? 30 feet is about what? Uh, 9? 9 meters? About 9 meters, we have a camber of uh, 13 mm for the 9 meters. So, we cannot, we cannot see it visually. We cannot see it visually. We can see that it is a straight line, but in impact, it has a camber of uh, 13 mm for the whole length of 30 feet. Okay? That is uh, what we mean by this example. Okay? So what about uh, talking about shear? So shear in pre-stress section, okay, we have what? Uh, in a similar manner, that just for conventional, and the expression that follow, BW is the web width or the diameter of a circular section, and deep is the distance from the extreme fiber in compression to the centroid. So, we what? We use B, W rather than B, and we use DP rather than D. Okay? So, same. Should the reaction introduce compression into the end region of the pre-stressed member, sections of the beam located at distances less than H over 2 from the face of the support may be designed for the shear computed at h over 2. So, the same. So, we still have this, no? Still have this on the shear conventional type. 
Okay. So, designed for the sure computed at x over 2 where x is the overall thickness of the number. So, again, we have the what? Uh, ultimate shear uh, stress is equal to ultimate shear stress divided by pi b d. Okay. So, what is the phi? When we are talking of what is the phi? Value of phi. So, let us continue. We can use approximate method for BC. Okay. Compressive, uh, no? With this method, the nominal shear capacity of a press section can be taken as so this is nominal shear capacity. 0.6 lambda square root of Fc prime. Okay? Plus 700 shear times D over M. So times B D. So D is the distance from the extreme compression fiber to the centroid of the pre-stressed tendon. That is D. Uh, we already have DP. DP is the distance okay, to the tensile reinforcement. Okay? While D is to the pre-stressed tendon. Okay? That is the difference of D to the DP. Okay? okay? So D is from extreme compression fiber that is top to the centroid of pre-stress tendon that is D while DP is again from the extreme fiber compression to the centroid of tensile okay? tensile enforcement okay they are equal in most cases more detailed analysis so you can choose between approximate or detailed. So, more detailed. So, little bit complicated formula. The same with what? Conventional. The same with conventional. So, usually, we are just uh, popularly using the approximate method. Okay? So, this is uh, for more detail. So, you can choose more detail or approximate. So there are two methods. For shear, that is for shear. Okay? So, this is how you design it. Using the conventional, also, same. Same in conventional. Okay? Same. And uh, therefore, let us have the example for shear. So therefore, we are uh, asked to find the shearing strength of the section shown in 19.13 at 4 feet from the support. At the distance 4 feet from the support. So, this one, no? So, we are given 20 feet. So, the uh, shorter it is, the... Uh, the uh, higher the likelihood that the uh, beam will be shear controlled. That's why, as you can see, this is not usual, 20 feet. Usual, 30 feet, okay, but uh, 20 feet, a little bit shorter. And more shorter, we have the shear control. But now, since we are using pre-stressed, so this is not a normal length for pre-stressed. Why use the pre-stressed? expensive one when you have only 20 feet okay that is not normal okay so anyway uh, just uh, for the example we have 12 by 24 again we have 20 feet we are uh, having 4 feet 8 feet 6 feet the uh, what the shape of the 
uh, tendon here, so three inches at the center, but we are interested here at four feet. Okay, what is the shearing strength at four feet from the support? So the four feet meaning from this support four feet. So this is uh, six feet. So we are interested here somewhere here. Okay. That is what we are going to calculate. Okay, so using both the approximate method and the more detailed method. So <laughs> both method that uh, are allowed by the code. Assume that the area of pre-stressing pre steel is 1. So effective pre-stress force is 250 FC prime for PSI. Normal weight. Okay, so approximate method first. So beam weight, compute, 150 times gross area divided by the pair the what this is a uh, factor conversion factor okay so 300 so w 1.2 plus 1.6 uh, live load so 1.2 dead load 1.6 live load so total 4.8 so therefore b is shear stress Okay, ah, uh, shear, uh, this is the uh, shear force, okay, so shear force is 10 feet, okay, so that is the, in the middle, okay, 4.8, so 4.8, so the shear is uh, in the middle minus at the 4 feet location, what is the shear at the 4 feet location, so just minus, so meaning 6 times 4.8, that is uh, <coughs> uh, 0.2 times 6, that is how much? 0.2 times 8, this is 1.2, therefore 30 minus 1.2, that is 28.8, okay? So we are correct. Uh, then uh, compute the uh, moment service moment so at the center then at the location this is at the location center minus that location so we have 153.6 okay so this is using the summation of moment formula okay from that point from that given point similar to the summation of uh, shear force okay? so therefore after that we can now uh, substitute all the values here so let's find out 0.281 that is less than 1 therefore it is okay it is possible okay that is uh, therefore uh, VC so calculate VC and then BS so that is uh, BU, VC and BS no so, BU is equal to BC plus BS. Okay. No, this is the formula. Okay. Therefore, just substitute the value here. 0.6 multiply lambda is 1 square root of BC prime plus 700 times BU is 0 0.2, 0 0.281. Then, uh, conversion factor, then, uh, rather D is... Uh, this one, then uh, uh, D is 18. So D is 18 here, as you can see here. So D is 24 here. Okay, 12, 12. So at the point 4, you can what? Raise in proportion. So this is 3, this is 12, so the height is, this is 12 minus 3, 9, 9 by uh, 6, by 9 by 6, okay? So 4, uh, 4 divided by 3, 9 divided by 3 is 3, so 3 here, and 3 here, so 
So if you have 3, 3. So for every 3, that is 2. So meaning to say, uh, 9 is 3. 3. So... So, 24 minus 6. So, 24 minus 6 is uh, actually 18. So, correct. Okay? So, from 3 plus 3, so that is 6. So, at this point, so 24 minus 6, that is 18. So, that's why it is 18 here. Uh, here, 18. That is D. And B is still 12, constant. So, we can... What? Uh, compute. We can compute everything. This is 50,000. Okay? And then minimum, BC. Let us compute minimum. So, we have this formula for minimum 2 lambda square root of FC prime uh, BD. Okay? And then maximum 5 Lambda, square root of C prime. So, 2 and 5. Between 2 and 5, that is... Okay. So, it is really in between, no? In between. So, therefore, uh, we have the real value of 50. Because we already checked it is between minimum maximum. Therefore, we have the BC value using approximate method. Now, for the uh, detailed method, more detailed method, the same value for I, YT, FE, okay? So, wherein you can find out the values. So, P over A, then P times E is 6, okay? At the port for fit location, at least uh, the value 6, okay? So 12 minus 6 is uh, 6, okay? So this is 6. Then this is C, still 12. Therefore, divide by uh, I. So you have 2,170, okay? Then after finding that out, we can find the uh, dead load moment, okay? Four feet. A dead load at that. Ten times one point two times four. Four feet is the our uh, moment arm. So ten times four times one point two. This is at the uh, then minus at the. So using the what summation of moment, okay? From uh, the four. The 4 feet location. So from the 4 feet location, so this is from the end, this is from the uh, 2 feet or the 4 feet location, end to the 2 feet. So we just minus, therefore we can find out the moment at the port. So 38.4, similar to what is our answer and the uh, what? The approximate method. Okay? So if the Stress due to dead load. So just dead load. So just substitute M, Y over I. This is just the conversion factor. So that is 400. Then MCR, cracking moment, just the cracking. Uh, stress or modulus. Then I over Y. Okay? So therefore... We have what? Uh, just substitute. Substitute for this. FE, FD. So FE and FD. So we already find out the value which is 400. Okay? So therefore, summing it up, so 2,476,000. So, divide by 12, so 206 feet pound.
thousand pit pounds. Okay, a little bit uh, more detail. So W U. So we can find out from our given. So then maximum moment. Okay, summation of moment. Then uh, also uh, from four pit then two pit so we can have the values. Then shear. Okay, so create an uh, what um, value for shear force. Okay, from uh, from the center to the end to the center to the four pit. So therefore you can subtract the. You can have this value, 26,000. And then BD, dead load shear. Uh, again, summation. From the center to the end, from the center to the four feet, so 7.2. Then D is 24 minus 3. This is uh, minus 3, so 18. Or uh, in inches, 19.2. So therefore, what is this? 18 or uh, multiply by 0.8 times 24. So 19 or 18. So let us have because that is 0.8 factor for uh, approximate, but this is detail. So we can use what? We can use 19.2 uh, here. 19.2. DP for our DP but our D is 18 okay so take note D is what uh, changing because it is what like this okay so but uh, need not be less than this one so this is our limit and compare Compare the value. So it is greater than. So therefore, VCI is 54,000. Now we can compute the shear uh, VC. Compute the shear VC. So therefore, FPC. Okay. So we have this. Okay. Compressive stress, centroid of the concrete. So we can just what? divide 12 by 24. So 868 psi. Uh, because this is stress, we divide by area. Okay? Total. Cross area. Okay? Then BP, vertical component of uh, pre stress section. So we have this uh, formula. Okay? So 9 times this one to 50. Then uh, this is square root of 9 plus 72. Or we have this one. Then uh, because this one is about 72.56, so divide, so multiply by 250, that is 31. Uh, keeps. And C, uh, BC is. 3.5 but this is uh, uh, less than the the value of modulus of rupture to 3.5 lambda okay this is uh, if you can recall equation 11 that's 12 if you substitute so 3.5 times 1 times uh, square root of 4000 plus 0.3 times uh, F uh, FC FC is 868 then times B is 12 times uh, D is 19.2 then plus uh, shear at the uh, uh, tendon so 31 so therefore we have the total 142 okay compare BCI and uh, BCW okay so BCI is here 54 and B uh, W is 142. Therefore, 
our answer is 54. By just comparing. So, comparing the two, we have 54. Okay? So, with that, any question? So, that means we are true with strength, limit state, serviceability, limit state of the topic, play stress, concrete. So, there are several topics still, or the, but those are additional topics only. So, these are additional topics. For example, uh, composite, continuous, partial. So, uh, we are just uh, focused on fundamentals, basic. Okay, basic. So, we don't need to talk about this anymore. So, last, uh, we have computer example. So, try to do this for your own good, for your own career in the future. You will have the Excel file. Make the Excel computation. Okay. Then, lastly, we have the problem solving practice. Oh, there are uh, how many problem solving practice? Uh, 16, 18, 20, 21, 22. So there are 22. That's all uh, for our discussion. So please try to solve as many as you can. Uh, for your own practice. You will not uh, do anything anymore. You will stop right here and uh, we will have the final exam on Friday. Okay, tomorrow. Okay. Okay, any question? Any question? So at least we have all the required Topics we cover all the required topics as indicated by chat. Okay, so reinforced concrete. We have what uh, design of column, design of beam, design of slab. We have the analysis of the column, analysis of beam, analysis of the slab. We have the pre stressed concrete, we have beam. And uh, we have uh, the uh, different methods, right? Pre-stressing, post-stressing. Okay? We have the uh, approximate method. We have the, uh, the uh, more detailed method. Okay? And as you'll notice, uh, we did not uh, discuss anything about foundation and puttings because those are not included in this course they are structural elements but they are included in a separate course which is uh, geotechnical oh, geotechnical subject okay so if there are no questions wala naman po sir wala naman po sir or any everything there are no questions, so good luck uh, on our exam. Again, this is uh, Dr. A.P. Preaching Engineering for Nation Building.